Mrs. Kindly's Christmas. It was nearly Christmas. Annie and Clarabelle were packed full of people and parcels. Thomas was having very hard work. Come on, come on, he puffed. We're feeling so full, grumbled the coaches. Thomas looked at the hill ahead. Can I do it? Can I do it? He puffed anxiously. Suddenly, he saw a handkerchief waving from a cottage window. He felt better at once. Yes, I can. Yes, I can, he puffed bravely. He pulled his hardest and was soon through the tunnel and resting in the station. That was Mrs. Kindly who waved to you, Thomas, his driver told him. She has to stay in bed all day. Poor lady, said Thomas. I am sorry for her. Engines have heavy loads at Christmas time, but Thomas and Toby didn't mind the hard work when they saw Mrs. Kindly waving. But then it began to rain. It rained for days and days. Thomas didn't like it, nor did his driver. Off we go, Thomas, he would say. Pull hard and get home quickly. Mrs. Kindly won't wave today. But whether she waved or not, they always whistled when they passed the lonely little cottage. Its white walls stood out against the dark background of the hills. Hello, exclaimed Thomas's farmer one day. Look at that! The driver came across the cab. Something's wrong there, he said. Hanging flapping and bedraggled from a window of the cottage was something that looked like a large red flag. Mrs. Kindly needs help, I expect, said the driver, and put on the brakes. Thomas gently stopped. The guard came squelching through the rain up to Thomas's cab, and the driver pointed to the flag. See if a doctor's on the train, and ask him to go to the cottage. Then walk back to the station and tell them we stopped. The fireman went to see if the line was clear in front. Two passengers left the train and climbed to the cottage. Then the fireman returned. We'll back down to the station, said the driver, so that Thomas can get a good start. We shan't get up the hill, the fireman answered. Come and see what's happened. They walked along the line around the bend. Jiminy Christmas, exclaimed the driver. Go back to the train. I'm going to the cottage. He found the doctor with Mrs Kindly. Silly of me to faint, she said. You saw the red dressing gown? You're all safe? asked Mrs Kindly. Yes, smiled the driver. I've come to thank you. There was a landslide in the cutting, Doctor, and Mrs Kindly saw it from her window and stopped us. She saved our lives. God bless you, ma'am, said the driver, and tiptoed from the room. They cleared the line by Christmas Day, and the sun shone as a special train puffed up from the junction. First came Toby, then Thomas, with Annie and Clarabel, and last of all, the very pleased to be in allowed to come, was Henrietta. The fat controller was there, and lots of other people who wanted to say thank you to Mrs Kindly. Pip peep, pip peep, happy Christmas, whistled the engines as they reached the place. The people got out and climbed to the cottage. Thomas and Toby wished they could go too. Mrs. Kindly's husband met them at the door. The fat controller, Thomas's driver, fireman and guard went upstairs, while the others stood in the sunshine below the window. The driver gave her a new dressing gown to replace the one spoilt by the rain. The guard brought her some grapes, and the fireman gave her some woolly slippers, and promised to bring some coal as a present from Thomas next time they passed. Mrs. Kindly was very pleased with her presence. You are very good to me, she said. The passengers and I, said the fat controller, hope you'll accept these tickets for the south coast, Mrs. Kindly, and get really well in the sunshine. We cannot thank you enough for preventing the accident. I hope we have not tired you. Goodbye and a happy Christmas. Then going quietly downstairs, they joined the group outside the window and sang some carols before returning to the train. Mrs Kindly is now at Bournemouth getting better every day, 
and Thomas and Toby are looking forward to the time when they can welcome her home.